Welcome back. This is Danielle from Splore Yourself Natural. I wanted to do a quick video today. I'm just packing up a couple orders, but while I am packing them up, um, I wanted to talk about shipping and little tips and tricks that I have found along the way. Um, if I like a particular company, that type of thing. So I just wanted to share a little of that with you. So these boxes that you see here, uh, they're actually for a local pickup, but these are nine by six by three boxes. I have gone through a couple different size variations over the years, but these fit the USPS padded flat rate mailers the best. Um, within the last year or two, I know that the postal service has changed the envelopes um, unfortunately i used to be able to fit a nine by six by four and it's just too tight now so these actually slide in really easily um, and they are nine by six by three i highly recommend these i grab these off of amazon they're actually one of the cheapest places i have found for less than a dollar a box even Uline, uh, I believe they're 125 a box on Uline. So uh, Amazon is where to find these. I do ship primarily with the USPS. At times I use UPS, but uh, USPS is usually giving me the best rates. Um, when I am shipping through my website, which is Shopify, we do use a secondary app, which is Pirate Ship. They have the best rates. It's a free app to use. You just connect it right to your Shopify and they will give you the best rates with USPS and UPS. I believe they even have FedEx at times, depending on what you're trying to ship. But I do like pirate ship a lot definitely saved me a lot of money and you can schedule pickups as well if you don't like to just drop it off at the post office or have your carrier grab it daily depending on how much you are shipping out at once so these boxes that you're going to see me grab are actually the nine by six by four i do like these a lot i still use them you just can't use them in the padded flat mate flat rate mailers but you can um, put them in the USPS regional A and B. So I love the A boxes. I know they actually just discontinued the A and B boxes, unfortunately. Um, I still have a couple hundred of them. And I believe you're allowed to use them through the end of the summer or through the end of the year. So when you're setting them up and when you're shipping things, you're not gonna select regional A or B. You're just gonna add in the dimensions and there's nothing else needed further. So you're still allowed to utilize the boxes um, until either the summertime or the end of the year. I can give you the exact date um, in the comment section below. But nine by six by four, they're really nice. They fit in the a box as well um, and I really like them for for shipping local I know a lot of people really really enjoy the um, square boxes they are seven by seven by six so they're the cube box through USPS um, hold a lot of stuff usually ship for around the same rate as that regional did eight and change depending on how heavy and where you're shipping it um, I don't use those as much only because I do gift wrap all of my products so unfortunately these boxes that you see don't fit so um, you could do like a you know a six by five by three would fit in there Really nice if you were looking to send a gift box inside of the box. And when it comes to the flat rate, small, medium, large, I try to stay away from them as much as possible. I feel like pricing can be done better, either through UPS or actually shipping it in your own box unless you're shipping something super super heavy so if you were mailing a wholesale order out that was 30 pounds of soap in the same box 
it's usually a little bit less expensive than if you used a medium or a large box itself unless you're shipping across the country it's typically cheaper to actually use your own box and ship it that way that's just my personal experience how i have um come across it but i used to use those all the time thinking i was saving money and i was actually not i lost a lot of money utilizing the medium and large packing boxes so there's a lot of other alternatives you just got to get creative and never be nervous to alter a box as well that's definitely something that i have learned along the way is altering boxes so if you have a box that's too big don't just fill it with you know fill or paper cut that box down um, and get it to be as small as possible so that your price point goes down on the length and width of the box itself if you do not gift wrap your products and you're just trying to get them there as quickly and as cheap as possible and presentation isn't super important to you or you're just mailing something um, you know to a family or a friend <clears throat> I typically would recommend utilizing the padded mailers um, or a small box if you're local um, I actually have a handful of wholesalers that are local to New England and I can ship a large box to them meaning like 18 by 12 by 12 you know up to about 25 pounds for under ten dollars as opposed to if i used a medium flat rate i'd be spending 16 or 17. so just keep that in mind if presentation means a lot i would try to find a handful of boxes with the exact measurements um, so you can put them into another envelope or mailer And if you're looking to find boxes that fit, you know, any of these mailers or boxes, don't buy them in bulk the first time you do them. I definitely <laughs> have learned my lesson on that. So I would go to Uline, I'd buy, you know, 500 boxes thinking they would fit perfectly and then they didn't. So spend a little extra, you know, on the initial, go to Amazon or Target or Walmart, wherever you're getting your boxes, spend a little bit more per box and only spend you know twenty dollars up front instead of five or six hundred dollars up front and then the box not fitting. So I would recommend that. I really like Amazon. I know I'm gonna keep saying that, but I buy a lot of my products on Amazon. I find some of them are a little less expensive than buying in bulk, depending on the product itself. Um, but you can return it. So if it didn't fit the box you wanted to or the package you wanted to. You can just return it and it's not like you're you're eating that cost itself and here you see me starting to gift wrap a lot of my products so that's part of a lot of my branding is that my products are um, ready to gift so i try to advertise that way that you can order something on my website you can add a little customized note and then the product is gift wrapped and shipped right to the recipient. So I do on all of my orders, unless they've asked me not to gift wrap it, um, I will almost always have it ready to gift. And I do add all of that into my pricing itself. So this isn't something that's free of charge. I don't obviously charge an upfront cost to it, but it is built into all of my products themselves so I just add a percentage to all of my products so I'm actually making up the difference in the gift wrapping so even though I'm advertising for you know gift wrapping at no additional cost it's already built into the pricing so here I do allow local pickups um, in my town for my customers of all the time I've been doing local pickups for my customers for about three years now and I have only one time ever had a new customer pick up. I know a lot of people get nervous about that and obviously you need to do what you are comfortable with um, you know depending on your location your comfort level that type of thing but the people that are typically picking up from my house are regular customers that I have met at a market 
somewhere, they regularly buy from me, and then they're local and they're just picking up the order. So that's something I'm very comfortable with. But everyone's different. And the last thing, quick thing I want to talk about is shipping your product in different weather. So um, I have invested and purchased little thermal bags at times, depending on the product that I am shipping. I don't know if I would do it for like a body butter that's not emulsified, but I've done it for salves. Uh, regular lotions with soaps in the summertime with no issue at all so uh, another thing to look into if it's something that you're you're trying to to ship a particular product all year dependent on the weather or thermal mailers not too expensive um, and a really cool thing to to look into so here I'm starting to actually pack up some of the other orders that I'm going to be shipping I utilize almost every shipping material that I get in the mail. So when I'm getting packages from my suppliers, I'm reutilizing all of their, you know, packing peanuts or a paper or bubble wrap, whatever it is. I really try to reuse the shipping items that I'm getting from my wholesalers. It definitely saves a lot of money and you know, it's good for the environment. If you're new to being a small business owner or just looking for extra tips and tricks along the way, make sure to subscribe. You could leave a little comment below if you have a tip or a trick for somebody else, like a little hack or something. It would be great to learn from others. I've been shipping for a long time, but obviously don't know everything and would love to learn a couple other um, tips or tricks. Oh, and here you see the padded mailer. You see how nice and easy they slide in, but you do still have to stretch those mailers for whatever reason. They're so much smaller than they used to be. So that is it for this video. I would love to hear what everybody does to save a couple dollars when it comes to shipping. Um, if you use a different carrier that I haven't mentioned, I know some people use like a DHL or something like that. Let us know how your experience has gone. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.